everybody ready. Here we go. Clear. Ready. Now, Tom? Yeah. You got to be real out of breath. Uh huh. Okay. Working on the water is always hard. It looks so easy, but there's nothing harder than uh, trying to make a movie anywhere near boats or water, because everything moves and everything's floating and the sun's moving and the wind and the currents and all those things. So we had this whole flotilla of, of boats and barges. <laughs> well, Bob comes up with these things, the ways of doing it, it was beyond my comprehension. You know, I never thought you'd take a barge out there and drop, you know, leave it there and then steer it around with these, this tugboat. It was, it looked to me like one of the most complicated, I didn't think it was gonna work. But there's no other way to control everything that Bob had to control. Because you're out there with multiple cameras and vista vision and all that stuff. But it was, uh, I mean, it was summertime. It was uh, South Carolina. The water was warm, and it was a beautiful, uh, all the shrimp you could eat. <laughs> Not that you'd want to after a while. It's like, what? And then run back to the wheel, and run back, and like, kind of do some steering, and run back and talk to him and back. All right, I got a feeling they're over there. Left! Left! Take a left! Okay! No! I said left! Jesus! Okay! Good! Which one? Left! No! his stuff, funny as shit. <laughs> and one day they were rigging me up in the in the thing up there and and I turned to Bob and I said, you know, because I have a lot of different rigs with my legs and different things, I turned to Bob and I said, uh, how many rigs can one man withstand? And he goes, oh, this is nothing. Meryl Streep had to act with a blue sock over her head. <laughs> I much uh, prefer to be on location than shooting in Hollywood. What a cute little church. Isn't this a very little church? Huh? You're very focused on the work. You're in a, in, a, in a strange place, so you don't really have a lot of distractions. Hey, Leslie, how old is this church? Didn't we find out? Uh, Pre-Civil War, because there's the blood of the, of the injured uh, soldiers under the floor here. You get to experience local color of where you are, and, and there's a lot of times that that spills into the movie. When the tape starts singing this, mm -hmm. Lord, lift me up mm -hmm. and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. Okay, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on Okay. Yeah. Let's roll sound and play back. It was pretty powerful stuff standing in the midst of all them singing along. 
They're a huge commodity. They're a massively talented group of people that do a lot of dates. When we arrived at Oak Alley, there wasn't a home. So that was a set that we built. But we took a, a look at this, and it was so much more iconic of the South than any town or any other fixture that you could imagine. I mean, these hundred-year and older oak trees that were draping this road leading to this former home. And so we designed this beautiful, stately boarding house when I brought Sally Field out there for the first time, she took a look and said, my, what a beautiful place. And I said, yeah, we just finished building it. And she said, you mean this place isn't real? That's showbiz for you. I thought it had been there for a zillion years myself, but evidently the house that was there right on that spot had, had burnt down and no one had built it back. And so they built it back. <laughs> Stop that. Boys! I gotta. There's a hole in the dialogue. Yeah, there? No, I, I, there's a hole in the. I, I don't get. I see. This is great, uh -huh. and you put it down, yeah, and we yeah, see yeah. the flag, right. and you gotta get. I gotta get you gotta oh, get moving out. See, you gotta get out. All right, I will. Okay. I get out. So whatever, so you can meet meet her, her sooner. All right. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Paused. Okay, copy that. Get your chin down, Field. That's good, though, Sal. Good. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Moving on. Well, I don't know. What do you guys think? There, that's good. Great. Now, you know what's good, um, Tom, is if you, it, you know, you kind of go, I got a pain here, you know, because then I'll see that. I'll see that action. Oh, I see. Okay. You know, but even though I guess it's got to be the other place, doesn't it? I don't see that at all. Yeah, just that. That's good. If you just do that. Good. Yeah. Um, you guys want to relax or stay there? Uh, I, I thought, did we put this log here or was it always here? And there are 100 years. 100 years. Oh, because I think it's loaded with any number of things. It wasn't there a week ago. Eat you alive. Uh, just like the house. You guys want to go in there? And action. Cut. Cut right away, once again. Yeah, please. And action, Sally. Are you going to eat forest? Mama, what's it mean when you got a pain, but you didn't get hurt? A pain? Where? Here. Something broke. Oh. You come back safe to me. Do you hear me? Cut. Okay. 
Very nice. Let's go home. Very nice. Beautiful. Yeah. I live up to this. Well, I thought it'd be inspiring. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah, you're good. Nice. Sally, thank you. That's fun, Sal. Yeah. That's our first mom and dad together. That is our sad. Sad scene. Beautiful. Sad scene. Beautiful. I went up and focused with me. Still won't. Yeah, yeah, the guy has up there. What's that look like, Bob? Don't follow up. And it would be going up. When we based ourselves in Beaufort, South Carolina, we discovered that there were a lot of outlying islands in the area that all had features that resembled different um, terrain in Vietnam. When we were staging a gigantic scene where Forrest was saving Bubba, was on Fripp Island, which is the furthest outlying island in this island chain. Michael, let's get on there again so we can get this set. Okay, Tom. What has to happen is Forrest has to go back and, and find his, his second best good friend, and that's Bubba. Hold on, the pants are going to fall down in the scene. Hold on. And the last time he goes in to keep looking for Bubba, he knows that they're going to napalm the whole thing. Yeah, they might. Oh, nice. Right, baby. Come on now. So technically, you know, I had to carry Michael T, which is no easy feat. So they they helped me out with some complicated rigging and monofilament lines and body harnesses and things like that. I can float this in. Tom Hanks is a nut, man. Tom is crazy. Tom is quiet, and then all of a sudden he'll just blah, just break out and just start doing this. The shtick. The name of that movie is Peter Motherfucker Pan. <laughs> Peter the Brother Pan. The brother. Be very careful. A camera speed. Speed. C speed. Speed. Four camera, come and march. Clear. Set. Action. <laughs> The first time we went through, I mean, Tom was running and it looked like, you know, Bubba was sort of floating on his own, like this sort of light feathery sack. He's, yeah. he's way high. Oh, he's way high. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's I all screwed up. Yeah. Wait a minute, guys. He, he's, he's like, he's like he's two and a half feet too high. Yeah. And then the next time we added a little more weight and then Tom was barely able to even run because he had so much weight that he was, you know, carrying. But we got it right eventually. Claire. And action. Action. And cut. Yeah. Print it. That's the okay. one. Let's blow it. So we need Do to it. check the gates. <laughs> yes. Now, so really aware of it. Right at the ground. A lot of people here. I just want everybody <coughs> to be able to count for everybody else. No. Also, they're not to squirt the camera. <laughs> and uh, definitely not squirt the camera. <laughs> Unless they're on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no. Okay. No, we even if they're not fire, they're not a fire. When the uh, when the moment came that it actually uh, went up in flames, uh, just uh, just with me, just a few steps in front of it. The very very I had I had to be very I couldn't misstep once, otherwise, I would have been killed, because uh, the gas flames were just a few feet, actually, the, 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 the napalm went off and I was asleep in my trailer, actually, after a long lunch. But the way it looks is uh, very, very dicey stuff and uh, I don't think I'm gonna do my own stunts after, after this movie is over. I think I'll have somebody else do it for me. but it's just not as wide as you would do in It's a wedge that, that's a little more narrow. Right. The thing that we never ever wanted to do in any of this movie was just do that kind of uh, tabloid pastiche version of whatever it is that we were doing. Because you don't want to get in a position where 
you know, you're doing something that is just so incredibly wrong that it just it wouldn't happen. Uh, that you're just so far off the base of any realism that you're kind of like you're doing some cheesy World War II movie on the back lot at MGM. You know, we didn't want to do that. We had Captain Dale die, who was probably the premier uh, Vietnam advisor. We're gonna make a wedge, folks. Alpha's here, Bravo's here. I'm playing a lieutenant in a platoon. I don't come from a military background at all. I wasn't in the service. So what we did was we went out to the jungle and we lived out there for three days, which is short by comparison to some of the other films that, that Dale has done. Platoon, I think he took them out to the Philippines for three weeks. Uh, the point man is Zorro, right? When Zorro moves, you'll see him. So that's about all you'll see. That's it. Move that, move when Zorro I'll go get my line. Yes. Yeah, go, go take your I'll get my line from the bit. The script called for a whole variety of different reigns in Vietnam that were listed off almost in the same way that Bubba listed off all the ways you cook shrimp. You know, doing rain that, you know, is running parallel to the ground is like nearly impossible. I mean, how do you get enough wind power to drive this rain just literally horizontal to the ground? And he was telling me about, oh, it's going to be, it's going great. We got this jet engine. And uh, I tried to imagine what that would be like. And I thought, well, it's probably like an engine of a jet stuck on what, like a trailer? Well, sure enough, that's exactly what it is. They just kind of pointed it at us, fired it up, and, and blew kerosene exhaust on us. It's not pleasant, I'll tell you that right now, but uh, man, that wind does blow. What was that Ritter doing on? Was there a Ritter on Tom that whole time? Yes. Well, nothing. Uh, um, playback, Ian. Maybe we should do. Is let's do, do one. That. Let's just do one more and just right stay on right on Tom. Oh, Whatever he has to do. Yes, please. I mean, so uh, this like that's why I felt that the, the, uh, we'll come back more often in the beginning. Yes, and then eventually we'll never come back here again. Right. Well, it was always part of the script that Forrest was relating the story to strangers on this on this bus bench. The screenplay actually was scripted in very few places, but I talked with Tom about it early on. I said, after we establish this character about midway through production, I think we should go and we should shoot you performing all of the what would end up in the film being narration uh, on camera. Usually, you know, you just take it for granted that a vast majority of the movie is gonna be voiceover and you'll be doing it later. And Bob's idea to shoot it, he said, oh, I think we gotta shoot it all. We gotta be there, we, already got, we, already, we really gotta shoot it. So, and I thought, he's cr why? I mean, we're just gonna have to redo it. But if we don't have to redo it, then we have it there in real time, in the real place, and, and you know, and it plays out in real scenes. That's better. Now, what are we doing with these cue cards? Are, where, where are they going to be for Tom? Um, so, let's just have one. I always knew that we'd start off with those cards, and by the time we'd rehearsed it enough, I'd, I'd know it at, at a pop. But it was just reams and reams and reams and reams of pages of dialogue. 
but they were all so connected with images that we had already filmed or images that we had talked about so much that I hardly even needed them. By the time the cameras were rolling, I didn't even look at them. Come on, Hanging everyone, it's fine. Okay, ready to go. And background action. And action, Tom. When I was born, my mama named me Forrest Gump. Hold on. <clears throat> and action. When I was born, my mama named me Forrest because of a hero, <laughs> okay, because of some general. <clears throat> and action. When I was born, my mama named me Forrest because of some general who was a hero in the Civil War. Mama said we was kin to General's family some ways. And he was a great man, she said, except he started up the Ku Klux Klan, Grand Exalted Pish Pash, or whatever they called himself. Anyways, this one time they were they was out running around in their sheets, in their underwear, hanging everyone in sight. General's horse tripped at something. The general fell into a bunch of mud. They must have mistaken the general for somebody else because in the confusion and all, it was dark out, and seeing how he was covering mud, they hung him too. Anyway, that's how I got my name, Forrest Gump. <laughs> and cut. Hey, now, where do you want, where do you, what, how, how you, the looks, where do you want them? I mean, you know, uh, What's on your mind? What you want it like totally conversational where I'm going all over the like that? Or do you want me to like lock into it, you know, or I just find it? Because I mean, if that was just everywhere, I don't everywhere, have to right. be everywhere. I think it should be two places. I think right. it should be, yeah. what, uh, I think it should be, yeah, yeah. out there with the reminiscing yeah. angle, which is that, and then the conversation. Can I go this side of this? Of course you can. Okay, okay, I can go anywhere. All right. Of course. I was like just kind of especially late in the schedule the way it was it was just oh it's the last thing i thought i would want to do by the time we got to doing it it was the most fun that i'd had on the movie because you literally get to spin this kind of yarn so it's not just me recording the information but me relaying the story which is a big big difference from that day on if i was going anywhere i was running and <laughs> okay, action Tom, backhand, power, back and forth, Valentino. As great an actor as Tom Hanks is, he's a really good ping pong player, but he's not as good as what Forrest has to become. More power, Tom. So we did that using movie magic. You have the actor's mime playing ping pong, and then you put the ball in later optically. And cut. <laughs> of course, in typical movie fashion, we hire the greatest ping pong player in the world to be his opponent. Of course, this guy's never played without a ball before. He's out. He's out. He's a, like a world-class ping pong player, and of course, to ask him to pretend to play ping pong is one of the hardest. It's, it's, he had such a tough time. If Valentino, when I crank it up, if he gets out of sync, why don't you just be still until he gets in? Okay. And then pick it up after okay, that. Okay. And then because what we couldn't do, you can't have both characters swinging at the same time. So we had to have a metronome so that each character would know when to strike the ball. And then we kept speeding it up and speeding it up. And it, was, it, was, it wasn't that easy. I tell you, it was exhausting playing that ping pong game. It was, jeez, it was very tough. I'd rather actually play ping pong with a regular okay. ball. That was, that was tough work. I'm beginning to see it though, Bob. I'm beginning to see the ball. <laughs> Ha! <laughs>
Hey Lisa here with more on Tom Hanks. Now the actor is no stranger to winning awards for his acting abilities and he along with Spencer Tracy remain the only two actors to have won back-to-back -back Oscars. Hanks being for Philadelphia in 1993 and Forrest Gump in 94. At the age of 45 he also became the youngest ever to receive the American Film Institute's Life Achievement Award on June 12, 2002. Now do you like my t-shirt? You can get one for yourself in the link in the description.